Hello everyone. I hope your lunch was good. I'm so jealous of everyone that is there at RDC right now. Um, so today I'm going to be doing a talk on visual effects. Thank you guys all for attending. Um, so creating stunning visual effects with simple tools. But who am I? I am Chris Hyde. I am a 3D artist at Uplift Games, the creators of Adopt Me, and I'm also known as Crikey on the platform. So here's some of the agenda. Um, so an introduction to myself, and then we're going to be looking at what's in our inventory when it comes to visual effects on Roblox. We're going to be talking about performance, theory behind visual effects, sounds, keeping up to date with Roblox updates, resources and references, and then my closing statements. So a bit more about myself. I have done three Roblox internships. I have done two accelerators. They were amazing opportunities. Highly recommend um, applying for those if you have the opportunity for it. And I did one marketing internship as well, which was a lot of fun. Um, since then, I've done two years of contracting with Roblox's marketing team and other various teams. Um, and I recently joined a uh, as a 3D artist at Uplift Games um, which, like I said earlier, the creators have adopted me, so it's an honor to be involved uh, with that project. Um, notably, I worked on the Bloxy Awards in the Heights and uh, the 21 Pilots concert that happened recently. So what is in our inventory? We have particle emitters, trails, and beams. A lot of you probably know this already, um, but I thought I'd cover the basics. Um, so particle emitters are images that are emitted um, from a point in 3D space. Trails trail behind an object in 3D space. And beams connect um, an image from two points and allow you to add speed to it as well, which will simulate movement. Um, but we've got more. Um, we have lighting objects. We have point lights, surface lights, and spotlights. Um, and then on top of that, we have environment lighting. So we can actually change the environment lighting um, for our player when visual effects happen through programming. And some notable examples I have here are exposure compensation. So what's cool with this is that if you change the exposure compensation on the client side, um, you can do cool things like blow out the player's screen if they're really close to the epicenter of an explosion. Um, and then I thought it was worth noting um, future lighting as well because it allows you to use really great shadows when you do use lights for your visual effects. And then also camera shake, um, it's not used often on Roblox, but it's great just for adding that extra level of immersion. If an explosion happens and nothing happens to the player, it is a little bit um, of a disconnect. So having that camera shake is really important and Slightnik um, ported easy camera shake on Roblox. So you can find that on the dev forum and I'm sure there's other options out there. We also have billboard GUIs. Um, so these are uh, 2D images uh, in a 3D point in space, but generally they are static. So they're great for lens flares, especially with the new brightness property that really allows them to sort of um, emit sort of light and surface GUIs. The GIF on the right here is from a game myself and Master of the Elements worked on. And we have uh, surface GUIs, and we're also using beams there um, to uh, for UX for our cover system. Um, and then also combining stuff like billboard GUIs with particles. Um, the GIF in the top left uh, is a sort of a pretty creative um, solution to a health bar. So when the player is damaged, it emits all these particles to really let the player know what's going on. And we also have alpha vertex painting. I thought I'd get a little bit more technical with this one because um, it's a feature that is sort of kind of hidden in uh, how you implement it on Roblox, um, but it can be really useful for visual effects, as you can see in the GIFs here. So it is a 3D mesh um, with painted alpha on it. And uh, why use this? You can use it to highlight objects, or you can use it in your visual effects for shockwaves, etc. And I put together a little tutorial here of how to actually implement this into your Roblox games. I'm using 3ds Max, um, but you can use your preferred 3D software. If we could uh, full screen this video, that would be great. Thank you. 
So I've created a mesh, um, just getting it set up. And I'm about to add a vertex paint modifier. I display the vertex paint colors so I can see what I'm doing. And what is really important here is I'm setting the channel to alpha. So the painting I'm doing in this object will affect the alpha mask on it. Um, so it's black for transparent and uh, white for opaque. It has to be exported as an FBX is another important note. So I've uploaded the mesh to Roblox here. Um, I set it to double-sided in this case. And this is why it's probably not that discoverable. The transparency has to be set to 0.02 or above in order for it to display in your games. And this works really well with the neon material, um, which I applied just now. But you don't have to use neon if you didn't want to. Okay. Next slide. Um, I think I skipped one. Let me. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, all good. Um, what else is in our inventory? Um, so we also have tween service, and this is great because it allows us to animate any numeric object property. So you can see on the GIF on the left here, um, these are actually neon parts that are being animated with tween service. And on the right, we have physics objects. Um, so I actually have like particles in a part and they are floating and following the player. And you can do lots of creative things with physics objects in Roblox um, combined with particles. So tween service, um, for a lot of you that come from more creative backgrounds and haven't done much programming on Roblox, uh, this might be a completely foreign concept, but I actually found out about this recently and it's been a game changer for myself. Um, so it allows you to yeah, animate any um, numeric property. I've got some of them listed on the right side of the slide here. Um, and the example I'm using is tweening the color three value of this part. Um, and I've got the code there. You can do cool things like reverse the animation. You can choose the easing style of it and the easing direction, how long you want it to take. Um, it's really worth diving into a little bit of programming to make your VFX come alive and just to um, expand the options you have for your games. OK, I have a bit of a question here. Which particle emitter do you think is more performance, the one on the left or the one on the right? Um, you can tell the person next to you um, which one you think is, just so they can make fun of you if they get it wrong in a second. So the one on the left is emitting 75 particles a second. And the one on the right is only emitting five a second. Um, so how do we achieve this? Um, so I actually created a custom image uh, for the one on the right um, to add more detail um, rather than adding detail through emitting more particles. Um, and then I lowered the rates to compensate for the extra detail that was in the original image. And I made it more opaque um, to compensate for lowering the rate um, to keep it at the same sort of transparency level the original particle was. Um, something else you can do in a slightly different scenario, when you lower the rate, um, you can increase the size and lower the speed, um, and they'll compensate for each other in that scenario. So yeah, the one on the right was actually 15 times um, more performant than the one on the left. Um, so yeah, there is lots of optimizing you can do with particle emitters. Uh, so that's good to bear in mind. <clears throat> to work out how uh, performant your particle emitters are, you can times the rate by the lifetime by the emitters um, you have in your game, and that will tell you sort of how many are emitted. And I know um, lifetime is a range, so it might be quite hard. You might have to use the average there, uh, but generally uh, this will be um, a pretty good thing to use to work out how performant they are. Um, Another thing that's important when it comes to performance with visual effects and particle emitters in particular is taking into account the different graphic settings in Roblox. We all know that Roblox is available on many different devices, um, and so there is quite a different range of graphical capability. Um, on the, the image on the left here is a particle emitter at level 1 and on the right at level 21, 1 being the minimum graphic settings and 21 being the max. So it actually reduces the amount of uh, particle emitters that are emitted 
Um, and you can compensate for this by adding in like a, a billboard GUI in the background um, just to make sure players know there are particle emitters there. Um, something else you can do if you're doing a bit of programming, if you use emit and choose how many particles to emit, it will always emit that amount regardless of the player's graphic settings. But I'd be a little bit careful with that. You don't want to sort of overload uh, a rendering for lower end devices. And then also memory. Memory is a big thing when it comes to performance. Um, memory will actually crash a player's game um, if there's too much memory being loaded. And uh, that comes down to the resolution of the images you're uploading for your vi visual effects. Um, so you want to make sure the resolution is as low as possible without losing too much detail for what you're working on. OK, and jumping into a little bit of theory here. So Disney has some animation principles. Um, we have squash, uh, sorry, squash and stretch, anticipation, follow through and overlapping action secondary action and exaggeration. Uh, these aren't all of them. They're just some I picked out that I think are pretty valid for visual effects on Roblox. And credit to Vincenzo for these gifts I'm about to show. So we have squash and stretch. Um, I know on Roblox you can't really do this um, with one particle emitter, but if you combine two um, where one is stretched out and one is squashed, um, then you can create this really cool effect, or you can use um, another one of the tools that Roblox offers, uh, like a beam to do something similar. Anticipation. Um, so this is uh, sort of building up before the big climactic point in your visual effects. This is really important. Explosions like magical visual effects, having a build up um, and then a climactic point is great. Follow through and overlapping action. Um, so if you're firing a fireball at something, um, there's going to be fire that sort of spreads out um, after it hits its target, and that's sort of what this is talking about. Secondary action. So let's say if you're firing that fireball, it might be blowing away the dust along the floor as it travels along the ground. Uh, An exaggeration. Um, physics is great, and it's great to simulate a bit of physics in your visual effects to make it seem realistic and immersive, um, but also we don't want to get too tied up in that. So a little bit of exaggeration goes a long way with making magical worlds and experiences. And sounds, um, obviously really important for visual effects and immersion as a whole. Um, you can use um, constant sounds like a buzz for a hologram visual effect, a splash for a waterfall, impact for bullets depending on the material it's hitting, explosions and magic. And here's a video showcasing um, some sound and visual effects. I'm using beams um, for the trails and some particle emitters for the smoke as this car turns corners. So without the sound, it might not be too obvious that there are visual effects going on. So it helps um, portray that better and just makes the game more immersive as a whole. Keeping up to date with Roblox's updates. Roblox are constantly adding new features. It would be a shame not to make use of them. Um, most recently, we have Billboard GUI Brightness. As I mentioned earlier, this is great for lens flares and uh, just making uh, your Billboard GUI sort of come alive for magical VFX, et cetera. And we have particle emitter facing as well, which I'll go over more in a bit because it's a little bit hard to explain. And then we have the incoming shape properties as well that are awesome. And I'm so glad they finally come to Roblox. So this is the um, particle emitter facing properties or orientation properties. Um, so from the left to the right, they're in order for the properties that are in that image at the bottom left. Um, so we have facing camera. So the uh, particle emitter will always face the camera no matter where the camera is. And then we have facing camera world up, which will face the camera, but it will always stick to the axis of um, the top of the image pointing um, upwards on the world axis. And then we have velocity parallel. 
um, which will point towards the direction that the particle emitter is traveling. So here I have it curving around a little bit, which is great. And then we have velocity perpendicular. Um, as you can see, it's sort of a flat square going upwards. Um, so yeah, these are really important for things like ember visual effects um, or visual effects uh, like, um, I guess, sun rays as well. You could use it for, I know Roblox have other capabilities for sun rays, but if you wanted um, sun rays coming out of like a neon object, uh, for example, uh, this would really help with that. And the incoming shape properties that actually are already released, which is amazing. Um, so we can emit particles dependent on the parent shape. Um, we have a load of extra tools here. So um, yeah, make sure you're sort of browsing the updates on the dev forum and uh, sort of keeping up to date with the community and what updates they're checking out as well, because it would be a shame not to know about this um, when it's already out. And then resources and references. Um, so to make visual effects, it is great um, to be able to use software like Photoshop um, and other various sort of image editing software. Um, but if you're not as skilled, a great resource out there, or just in general for anyone, a great resource out there is Photoshop brushes. Uh, we've all been in a situation where we've been looking for a PNG image with an alpha background online, and then it has those white and gray uh, checkered squares behind it and it's not actually a PNG. Um, yeah, I know, awful. Um, so Photoshop brushes uh, do this by default and they have um, so many great resources on there. So clouds, lightning, um, there's Photoshop brushes for so many different things and in so many different varieties as well. So I definitely recommend checking out uh, those resources for your visual effects and particle emitters. And then also um, with your resources, it's great to organize your assets as well. Um, I have a visual effect place I use to create all of my new visual effects uh, that have all my images lined out that I need to use. Um, so I'm not sort of scouring through the internet or through my file explorer to try and find the image that I'm looking for. It's in fact straight in front of me. Closing statements. So yeah, organize your assets. Um, so you always have uh, things you've made in the past on hand. So you're not jumping in and out of games and sort of making all of your work take longer and combine the tools that Roblox provides. We went over a lot of different uh, basic visual effects tools Roblox has like the emitters, trails and beams. Um, but there's so much more with the lighting objects with tween service. Um, and, and sounds as well. Combining all of that is how you create really good visual effects. And don't be afraid to use references as well. Industry references, uh, you can go on YouTube and other video platforms um, to look at VFX reels that people have created to show off their work and um, yet yeah, take inspiration from that.